The A115 is a very special product because next to the army of hardware components that Corsair pushes out, it has a category all by itself. It is not Corsair's first air cooler, there were others before that, but by today's standards they are all outdated and pretty much non-existent on Corsair's website if you don't know what you're exactly looking for. And as of right now, this is the only air cooler that they are offering and they did try to go all in on that one. This is a dual tower fan cooler featuring their AF Elite fans in 140mm, which are spinning up to 1600 rpm whilst pushing up to 84.5 CFM at up to 1.73 mm of H2O. In the bottom, we got a nickel-plated 82.8 by 38.9 base featuring six 6 mm black heat pipes traveling up the 159 mm high black dual tower heat sinks. But the whole cooler is a little bit higher than that. On one side, we got the outsticking heat pipe ends, but actually it's because of these turtle chokers. This is Corsair's approach to get rid of fan clips. For some reason, there are some big manufacturers, some big cooling manufacturers that hate them. I'm not sure why, but they do. Be Quiet, for example, got rid of them and Arctic too with the Freezer 36. And the approach that Corsair tried here is somewhat comparable to what Be Quiet did. On the heatsink end, we got a plastic piece of Ocean Destroyer 3000, and on the fan end, we got the rails, which are made out of metal. Great Corsair, why not both? Anyway, mounting down the fans works somewhat, well, pretty much exactly how Be Quiet's approach did. You put it on there and then you adjust the fan to the height that you want it to be. Of course, having it at the very bottom will yield the best results, as much as of the heatsink as possible is covered, but allowing them to move it up makes this cooler 100% RAM compatible. As for possible fan positions, in theory there are a set of points in which the rails will click into place, but the tension of the rails is actually big enough to keep the fan in place no matter where you want to place it. Compared to Be Quiet's approach, the rail system works pretty similar and the main difference actually, in my opinion, is how the whole thing feels. And on that front, I gotta say, Corsa did a way better job. Like, moving this up and down doesn't feel like I'm hurting the cool or I'm hurting my system. This... And now compare that to Be Quiet, it's like... Ah. And because these are standard fans, these are also standard holds, which can be said about the Dockrook Elite. There everything is pretty much custom. And even if you can technically remove the central fan, replacing it with anything that fits is, is, a, an, is an endeavor for itself. And the whole thing just ended up feeling like a whole bunch of like a whole bunch of plastic. This is definitely the better approach in that regard. And installing and removing fans doesn't feel as brutal as it did on the Elite, and I can swap out the fans for no matter what standard 140mm fan, I can do it. But that doesn't mean that Corsair didn't also do some random seeming stuff on here. First off, only one of the fans comes pre-installed with the rails which is just weird, you will need to install the rails on the second fan yourself, and installing them is one of the most confusing encounters I had this year. The rails are marked with left and right, great, but left and right from which side of the fan? I guess that it was whilst well, looking from the front, and I was right, because the plastic pieces on the heatsink are marked as well, so I could have checked there, maybe I'm just too easily confused, possible, or Corsair could have also just made them symmetrical and, you know, make them swappable left and right. That would have been possible. Or pre-mounted them on the, on the fence, where everybody would be happier. But then there are also these. These would be used on a triple fan setup, which in itself isn't a problem. It's because now L is on the same side as R, and I realized that L and R are just there so that you can re reverse them for this part, because now the fan is pulling, not pushing, so you need to install the rays uh, like from the front side of, of the fan, not the back side, which means that everything is in reverse, so my confusion just reached a new all-time high. I I I'm confused. No, I believe that generally, because I did a better job with the fan mount that than Be Quiet, not as good as Arctic Screw Approach, that was fantastic, but better than Be Quiet. But the rails should have been pre-installed and these should not have been there in the first place. I get the triple fan setup, I really do, but you will need to purchase the rails separately. Like the plastic part on the heatsink is there, but for 10 bucks you will need to get another fan rail set so that you can mount a fan. And they include these on the heatsink knowing that nobody can use them except for the people that buy the extra rail set. 
so why not just include the plastic pieces in the rail set as well and not have this on the cooler all, at all times, which just looks like something is missing. Anyway, the A115 comes in a regular cooler style box, but on the inside, it's a bit different. Everything, and I mean everything, comes inside its own little paper bag. Who came up with this? I, like, I like that everything is marked with its content and purpose, but what the hell? Once everything is out, you will get the mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, no printed manual, which isn't particularly good, I don't like that, a PVM splitter and no thermal paste because it's pre-applied on the cooler. To get to the manual, you can scan the QR code and go to guides because downloading a manual makes too much sense. And it's not a manual, it's a quick start guide for some reason. Anyway, the installation as a whole is fine, nothing revolutionary. I just found that the individual pieces look like raw. Like usually it's either polished or painted or anything, but here it's just raw. But let's be honest, nobody sees any of this after installation anyway, so who cares. To get it going on Intel, we need to position the backplate behind the motherboard and for LGA 1700, we need to pull the ends outward. And don't go crazy on those because there is no hard stop. You will pull the thing, the whole thing off and you will have a real hard time finding out where that middle piece section went. Once it's behind, we install the screws according to the socket with the black pieces on the motherboard end, install the retention brackets with the ends pointing away from the chip and screw them down using the thumb screws. For AMD, we remove the original retention brackets, replace them with the AMD spacers with the thinner end pointing downwards, retention brackets pointing inwards on top and then screw everything down. From there just slap the cooler on top and screw it down and of course don't forget to mount the fans and connect the fans and install the rails on the fans because that they should have done it like at the factory. With pretty much everything about this cooler covered, including my confusion, let's get to the benchmarks. First, we tested it on top of our Intel 3900K machine using the usual three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. Then we slowly lowered the fan speed while snowing down the noise and temps to create a noise to performance curve. At 120 watts going through the socket, the A115 performed very respectably. At 31.8 degrees C above ambient, it is amongst the very best air cooler so far. Phantom Spirit, Ice Lead X7 Dual, Dark Rock Elite all performed within a margin of error. Close behind we have the Deepcool Assassin 4 followed by the Noctia NHD 15 G2 which underperforms a bit at this lower workload. And overall for the A115, for very low workloads or gaming in general, very very good. The noise to performance curve on 120 watts was also respectable. At the higher end it was a bit louder than the other ones, or at least its max noise output is higher than all the other high end coolers on the list. And as the speed drops further it becomes better than the Assassin 4, staying very close behind the D15. Looking overall at 120 watts on the chip it performs almost like a D15 G2, just with a little bit more headroom which ends up creating a little bit too much noise. At 250 watts going through the socket the A115's position didn't really change, it is still within a margin of error of the best coolers around, the only difference is now that the Elite started to gain a little bit of distance and that the G2 finally woke up. But looking at the whole list, it is still really, really good and definitely capable of cooling down a high-end CPU. The corresponding noise to performance chart changes slightly. Now the Assassin 4 and Peerless Assassin are definitely behind, but the A115's ratio is now behind the Elite and Phantom Spirit and NHD 15 all the way through the run. And here we can also see something interesting about the AF140s. For the last 20%, so 90 and 100% fan speed, the fans didn't really had that much of an impact on performance, but a whole lot on the noise. Coming to 320 watts, which not a lot of air coolers can do in the first place. This time TJ Maxx is set to 115 degrees and we are stopping the test once the chip reaches 110. And at 82.4 degrees C above ambient, the A115 managed to do something I didn't expect. It took the first spot. Now to be clear, it is within measuring tolerance of the second spot, after all 0.3 degrees C isn't anything worth talking about, but at the very least I gotta say, this thing performs amazingly under extreme workloads. And as of right now, even with fewer heat pipes, this thing performs or beats a NHD 15 G2. No clue what Corsair did to that base, but damn. The noise to performance curve for 320 watts is unfortunately exactly what you would expect. Sure, the A115 ends up marginally higher or marginally uh, better, let's say, but it is also quite a lot louder while doing it. And with a workload as high as this one, every air cooler just becomes a smudge. 
a smudge where if I turn down the fan speed just a little bit too much, the whole thing breaks down. And overall, even if the Dockrock Elite and NHD15 G2 are slightly hotter, they will also significantly quieter while it's doing it. Over on AMD, we benchmark using a 7950X3D on stock settings and we measure the performance by looking at the average clock speed across all cores. Again, slowly limiting the fan speed and measuring the noise along the way. On this one, we found pretty much the same thing as on the higher Intel workload. Yes, the A115 allowed the 7950X3D to clock marginally higher than any other cooler on the list, but once we make the fan spin slower to turn down the noise, things start to change. In fact, once we make the fan spin slow enough so that the noise reaches the same level as the full speed of the NHD15 G2, well at that point the CPU already dropped below the 5 GHz line. So yes, at full blast the A115 is a beast, but the noise to performance ratio is definitely a little bit far below that one of a D15 G2 on Intel and on AMD. And partially this also applies if we compare it to the thermal ride cooler. On the other side, compared to, let's say, the Deepcool AK620 assessed for our Dockrock Elite, well, yeah, there the A115 definitely has the upper hand when used on the bigger X3D chips. The A115 is way better than I expected. I expected something that performs roughly like an NHD15. Not the new one, the old one. But no, max performance-wise, this thing was a beast. And noise 2 performance wise, it's still very, very good. It is just not the best. That it is definitely not, but still respectable. And design wise, I think Corsair did a fine job here. It's all black, modern, simple, a tiny bit of Corsair at the top, if, if that look is fine for you. But overall, a simple and clean all black cooler that perfectly fits into an all black build. And to my very surprise, the price does not have the usual Corsair tags. The cooler goes right now for 115 USD on their shop and I can get it for around 105 euros here in Europe. But something that bothers me a lot is apparently the cooler was supposed or was at some point going for 99 USD by default. The price just increases by 15 bucks once the site is fully loaded. Which is unfortunate because 99 bucks would have been such a good price. That would have kept it below the Dark Rogue Elite. Because right now the A115 goes for 35 bucks less than the D15 G2, which okay, the D15 is insanely overpriced, sure, I get that, but the thermal ride coolers generally go for like a third of what the A115 cooler costs. And that's a tough spot, because it doesn't quite have the amazing noise to performance ratio of the D15 G2, but it also isn't as affordable as anything coming from thermal ride. But that's really up to you. Generally, the A115 is an amazing air cooler. It does fantastically on both AMD and Intel. The noise to performance ratio is good. Not amazing, but good. And the price is okay if compared to things from Noxia or Be Quiet. The only thing I would have wished for for the future is A, print a freaking manual. Nobody needs to go through this labyrinth. Pre-install the second set of fan rails and get rid of this because people can't use it anyway. Or out of the box anyway. But okay, this should be all for Corsair and their A115. And at this point, a huge thank you to Corsair for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to paint these. They look way too raw. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Noxia NHD15 G2. Noise-wise, unbeatable until now. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.